Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. How are you all doing? And it's great to be back. There will be some more videos uh, coming very soon about different subjects. But as the title is going to state, this is going to be about the EU. And specifically, it's going to be about the Kashahogi. I believe that's the correct pronunciation. Kashahogi. Murder, by the way, if the name rings any bells, the reason why it rings some bells is simply because that this is the journalist that was in an embassy that somehow disappeared from the embassy and his body was found later on cut into pieces that was linked to the Saudi prince for being a dissenter of his and pointing out the human rights violations in which that country and in turn him condone the prince. Yeah. Turns out that the UN have actually done an investigation into this and there is now credible evidence to actually suggest that all of the people that were saying that this was true to begin with and this is definitely what's happened and all the conspiracy theorists in general that were saying this and generally the normal people, in fact, as well, that were saying, hey, this looks really suspicious, yet somehow we can't prove any of this, and if we do, where do we go? Now, I want to preface this. This video is not going into depth about how I think that Saudi Arabia has done this, because they have, let's be honest. This video is a critique to say, okay, UN, you've now done... This investigation, you have now proven by yourself and by this report that you feel without a shadow of a doubt that the Saudi prince has actually condoned this and actually solicited this to happen. What's next? What do you do next? So, with that being said, let's actually get into this video and let's have a quick discussion about what I think the UN is not going to do. So, welcome back. We are now going to be talking about the original, how this actually has happened. So, Kasha Hoggi's death, Saudi Arabia says a journalist was murdered. So, Saudi Arabia themselves has actually come out at the beginning in the 22nd of October 2018, yes, that long ago, actually come out and said that he was murdered, but said that he was murdered by a rogue faction that somehow was able to get into a embassy, was actually able to get the body out of the embassy, and was to cut the body out while either outside of the embassy or inside the embassy, as there is no way of the body actually getting out that has been seen by a camera as a whole body. So, yes, now that we've recapped on how that actually happened, let's just quickly delve into this little bit of a story so we actually have a little bit of context behind this. So as I said, Saudi Arabia has blamed the killing on the journalist, uh, Jamal Akashahagi, on a rogue operation. This is giving a new account of an act that sparked a global outcry, and still should do to this day, because it was a country silencing a journalist, because the journalist was pointing out the bad stuff the government was doing. And by government, I mean the crown princes. You know, the royalty that's out there. But hey, let's carry on. So Foreign Minister Adil A. Jabir, and I'm sorry for the mispronunciations, it's not my first language, obviously, or my second or my third, I don't even speak it, so forgive me for the pronunciations. The murder had been a tremendous mistake. Well, that implies some complicitness, does it not? That it was a tremendous mistake. That that sounds like they had some hand in it, does it? You know, you don't say, oh, it was a mistake if you had nothing to do with it. You condemn the action, don't you? But hey, that's just me on here just looking at language and how people were speaking. 
and denied the powerful crown prince had ordered it. Kashahagi was last seen entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. The Saudis, under intense pressure to explain Kazahagi's whereabouts, have offered conflicting accounts. So they initially said he had left the consulate on the 2nd of October 2018, but on Friday admitted for the first time he was dead, saying he had been killed in a fight. This claim met widespread scepticism. I wonder why this would have put scepticism into the world where the Saudis were saying that in their own consulate, their own foreign ambassador, if you will, that somehow this person had disappeared and they were saying that they had no idea where he was, even though the last time it was seen, he was seen, was in the consulate. Interesting that, isn't it? And then they had to change the story to say that, yeah, he was dead, but he died in a fight. And it was a massive mistake. But honestly, guys, honest, nobody actually meant for this to happen. What do you mean you want to know where the body is? Carrying on just a little bit so you know that I'm not pulling anybody's leg on this. Turkish officials that believe that Kasahagi, a prominent critic of the Saudi government, was murdered by a team of Saudi agents inside the building and say they have evidence to prove it. And this is obviously from Turkey. Has the Saudi version of events changed? Again, Abdul Al Ajaba's comments describing the incident as murder are some of the most direct to come from the Saudi official. Again, almost a sense of complicitness to say, yeah, we're really sorry, but it wasn't supposed to happen like that. Or rather, we weren't supposed to let you find out like this. The individuals who did this, did this outside the scope of their authority, he added. There obviously was a tremendous mistake made, and what compounded the mistake was the attempt to try and cover it up. So, this is from their foreign minister, who is talking in an interview that states, by the way, this is all for the foreshadowing of the amazing UN report that basically confirms everything a BBC report has already done about eight to nine months ago. But we'll get to that bit afterwards and see what we can do with the UN on that one. But... That sentence there, from the foreign minister, the individuals who did this, did this outside the scope of their authority. What, you mean people acting on behalf of the Saudi crown, so to speak, were inside the consulate that asked Katahagi to go there and somehow murdered him. But, you know, that wasn't the mistake that was made. The actual mistake was the fact that we tried to cut, we tried to cover it up. So carrying on very, very quickly, the minister also said that Saudi Arabia did not know where the body was, and instead of the action had not been ordered by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, seen as the country's most powerful figure. So you're telling me that in a foreign dignitary office, four representatives of themselves, that the most powerful man supposedly or figure in the actual Saudi Arabian crown the prince the royalty had no idea that these people were going to kill a journalist Kazahagi who was or Kazahogi should I say that is against the whole process of the human rights violations going on in Saudi Arabia and was a massive critic of him we are to presume that these individuals acted out as a fringe operative in a their own consulate on foreign land. We're supposed to try and believe that after they tried to cover it up. Now, I know circumstantial evidence doesn't prove the actual causation, but... You don't get much obvious than this without actually coming out and saying, yeah, we did it, lad, sorry. So now we go on to the fact of Turkey saying that the government itself actually has forms of the phone calls being recorded, uh, the fact that there was the videos of him going in, 
and everything else of that the fact that there was uh, the sound of gunshots that have been heard and things like that you can all read this in this story that i'm going to link in the description box down below they've also been kind enough to be able to provide hyperlinks to all of their own sources as well on this occasion from the bbc so you can have an extensive reading source so we now move on to the new news that has come out today and is breaking news as you can see at this moment in time where Credible evidence, Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman liable for Khashoggi's murder, says UN report. So, we get to the point where the UN has now done a report to confirm evidence that they think that the Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman is liable for the murder of the journalist that was completely and utterly against and was a massive critic of Saudi Arabia. I mean... I applaud them for finally producing the evidence, I suppose. But all joking aside on how affecting of the UN is at this moment in time about how they're going to do anything about this, let's carry on and read the story just a little bit and then I'll give you, if you want to, obviously afterwards, some of my ideas of how this is going to do absolutely nothing. But let's carry on and read through this a little bit more. So... There is credible evidence Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman is liable for the murder of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi. A UN report has concluded Khashoggi, a critic of Rahalda, was last seen entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul on October 2nd to collect papers ahead of his wedding. His body was dismembered and removed from the building and his remains have not been found. Again, alluding back to the BBC report that I produced for you to be able to read anyway, was a case of, they said that this was a fight that went wrong and that the body was cut up to try and cover it up. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you, honest. But you know, YouTube, let's carry on. So, in its conclusion of the special rapporteur, that Mr. Kashahagi, or Kashahogi, has been the victim of a deliberate, premeditated execution and exeditional killing for which the state of Saudi Arabia is responsible under international human rights law, said the UN Special Rapporteur, Agnes Kalamad. Now, you may think that that sounds very official, very important, They've decided to give him sanctions. That's it. They've decided to give him sanctions on his own personal assets. Somebody who is one of literally the most richest people in the world is going to have some of his assets sanctioned in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Let's, let's carry on because I think that that's only the beginning and I like I said, I will get into what I think is the point of this or should i say lack of but let's foreshadow that for later there is credible evidence warranting further investigation of higher level saudi officials individual liability including the crown princes she said indeed this human rights inquiry has shown that there is significant credible evidence regarding the responsibility of the crown prince demanding further investigation of the crown prince this is all well and good and i think it's a good thing to be able to investigate people that we think have actually committed this and prove that they have committed this again i will wait until i finish this we've only got two more little sentences or technically paragraphs so i will read these and then i will move on to my conclusion if you will bid me that time so Targeted sanctions on Saudis linked to the killing ought to include the crown prince and his personal assets abroad. So not even his personal assets in Saudi Arabia, but his personal assets that may be abroad. That is such a hindrance to one of the richest people in the world. Such a hindrance. Just the places that are abroad that are now going to have some sanctions on them. But that, let's carry on. There was no immediate reaction from the Rihad, which was sent the 100-page report in advance, but the kingdom has regularly denied 
accusations that the prince was involved. Not that they weren't involved, which then would complicitly mean that the country wouldn't act without the crown prince's say-so, that they actually killed him. They just said that the crown prince wasn't involved. That means by implication, or implying, that they were involved. But the crown prince didn't know anything about it. Somehow I don't see how that happened. Give me just a second and I'll be right with you and we will be doing the conclusion and the whole point of why I think that this is complete and utter hogwash. This just does absolutely nothing and will do nothing for nobody whatsoever. So for me, the conclusion is that the UN has done a report and is now putting sanctions onto the individuals that have been involved in the country silencing the journalist that was completely against the human rights violations of Saudi Arabia and was a critic of the regime in Saudi Arabia and especially of the crown prince. So, what does this actually mean for anybody that's actually just a layman like me and you that has no idea what these things are actually doing? Well, in part, it means absolutely nothing. It doesn't confirm that the crown prince has actually done anything, though there are credible evidences that prove that he is involved or at least implication in the involvement thereof. But it's not a criminal court case. It's not a case that has been, should we say, has Juden's, Juden's Prudence. It doesn't have any sort of weight behind it. It's a report to try and calculate and confer all the evidence together to try and say, well, this is what we think's happened and here we go. It's not a condemnation, necessarily, of the Saudi Arabian prince. It's more of a point of saying we've done something and yeah, it does actually prove this. Now comes into the point of where I think the UN is woefully inept to deal with any of these sort of situations. The reason why I think that the UN is inept to be able to deal with this is now what does it do? It's now tried to provide sanctions on what it can provide. So what it can target, but in essence, which is the fact of it's going after the Saudi prince's personal assets in and around the rest of the world, or rather more in case of where the UN has influence, should we say, which is mostly of Europe in general and a couple of other places. But yeah, that's generally where that goes. So interestingly, one of the richest men in the world can't really travel without paying extra money to the country, to the UN, the sanctions and whatnot. Question, how does this actually prove the fact that he actually has done anything? Where is his actual punishment for the actual fact? And I know I can hear people in the background going, but he's been sanctioned, but he's been sanctioned. So what? That doesn't prove the implications that he's actually done anything. That doesn't actually provide any sort of recompense to the fact that he's actually done something like this or has the potential of doing this or has done this yet the UN's already acted and says well we want to take your money away well fine that maybe that is some way of hurting the man's pride so to speak and being able to get something back off of him but that doesn't bring justice to the journalist that was reporting on the human rights violations of the Saudi prince and being a massive critic of the Saudi prince's involvement in the westernized world at that moment in time and of other wars in Yemen and so on and so forth doesn't do nothing for him not at all there's no protection of free speech there there's no protection of journalistic integrity there's no retaliation and I don't want an eye for an eye or two for a two for a, a massive invasion or anything else like that but wouldn't it be nice to have a criminal investigation into it and wouldn't it be nice to actually have a criminal court case that actually goes against him for that when they have enough evidence to be able to do this or is this a case of in my opinion and this is my opinion is this a case of a deal that's been struck for the saudi prince to say well look you need a scapegoat for this i don't really want to go to prison or be held for any sort of murder that may have been done or may not have been done in my name whatever on that one whatever you want to take that one but yet, what we'll do is, if you sanction me, it looks like you've done something, and it doesn't actually affect me or my liberties. 
All it does is affect my money, which I have plenty of, which I'm not going to even worry about it. It doesn't do anything. It just looks good-ish in the eyes of the public to make it look like the UN is actually, one, comparable with being able to do something. Second, the fact that it actually has done something. When, in actual fact, it hasn't. It's got evidences and reports to say that this has actually happened. They believe it's to happen. They're not bringing him to court. They're not taking him to court over it. They're not trying to transfer him from his country to be tried, at least in Turkey, for instance, or in the EU as a whole, obviously Turkey not being part of, to be able to have this done, to be able to bring him to actual justice. Because the UN has no teeth. The UN has no power outside of the UN members. The only way that it would have power is to extradite him, the Saudi crown prince, to be able to go against the evidence to be able to have his day in court, so to speak. The UN's not doing that. Why? If it has evidence to prove that the Saudi prince has done this, which it keeps on saying that it has, why is there not a judicial case against him? And I think it's because they have come to a deal. Because they still want to have their money, their oil and everything else like that that comes through. Now, that's not me being a leftist. I'm joking. But that's not me being a leftist in general. That's me honestly saying that the precedence of what can be earned and what is the benefit of the country outweighs the individual's rights and the rights of the journalists and the rights to free speech and the rights to actually freedom of press, for instance. You could say that this is a case of, for the Saudis anyway, that if this goes through without any sort of judiciary process, then they can get away with murder just by paying a fine. Because that's all that this really boils down to, isn't it? That they can entice a journalist to come to their consulate on the pretense of getting paperwork for a wedding causing a ruckus necessarily if their story is correct to kill Katahagi dismember him say that it was a fight which anybody that says that they knew him Katahagi said that he would never have caused a fight and was scared of going in the first place to that place and then was dismembered and the whole process was covered up. And then the implication of that from the foreign secretary, as you read from the first story, was, yeah, it was a really bad mistake. But, you know, the crown prince wasn't involved. Honest. Honest, he wasn't. Honest. The brutal regime that completely and utterly controls almost every aspect of everybody's life wasn't in control of a massive consulate group that was designed to kill a journalist that was against the Saudi prince. Again, I keep on saying that the circumstantial evidence is overwhelming on that aspect. It basically, the only thing that would be any better is if he come out the prince and was to say this. But the video itself is getting a bit long. So let me just wrap this up very quickly. For me, as I said, the UN has no teeth. This will not go any further. There will no be no court case. There will be nothing to actually go against the prince apart from these sanctions, which looks good on paper, but actually doesn't limit any of the freedoms of the Saudi prince, doesn't stop him from going to any countries to be able to initiate trade deals or any sort of other deals that may be going on. It doesn't actually hinder the prince whatsoever in loss of liberty as in a recompense for what may or may not have occurred officially. But yet they have acted in recompense, so to speak, to sanction him because they believe they have enough evidence to be able to say that he has done this and in the eyes of the public, not the law, to make it look like they have done something to be able to say, look, we have done something, we have to take an action on this. To me, that's nothing. The UN bar actually going in and trying to extradite this person, the Saudi prince, and others that were involved, it's a non-starter. It's not going to happen. They don't have the power to do that. And that's the sad thing of the UN, and that's the sad thing of this story. 
You can literally, as a country, get away with murdering a journalist that is against your regime by paying off some sanctions. Let me put this into perspective for anybody that was on the left or centrist or was not 100% certain of what this implication is. Say, for instance, Jim Acosta somehow mysteriously disappeared in a US ambassadory in a consulate and was murdered because he caused a fight and was completely and utterly dismembered and the body was never found and the implications were that Trump did it. Would you not want Trump or anybody else, Obama, whoever, to be arrested and tried for the implications of being head of state and probably signing off on that murder? Because I know I fucking would, regardless of what political side I'm on. Because I tell you what's the most important thing in this aspect is the process of the freedom of speech and the freedom of press to report on the regimes, good, bad, ill or not. So with that being said, guys, hold fast to your freedom of speech. Hold fast to the freedom of press. From me, to you, to the journalists, to the BBC even. Hold fast to their right to be able to print what they want to print. As long as it's based in some form of fact. Because otherwise we just turn into the Saudis. We turn into the people that we despise. And we'll kill people that are dissenting against us. And again, to reiterate. Pay off the UN so they don't have to have any recompense for it. That being said, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video as much as possible. Thank you very much, guys. There will be more videos coming out soon. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now, guys. Take care.